The Montreal Canadiens are my second favorite team, and this, technically, is going to be a negative video about them and how they've handled their business the past few years. But, even though this is technically a negative Canadiens video, I'm sure a lot of Canadiens fans that are watching this are going to be a little bit happy to hear it and say yeah. Even if this is technically not a great outcome for the Montreal Canadiens, this is a good outcome in general. Because today we are talking about forward on the Colorado Avalanche, Jonathan Drouin, and how he is proving Montreal wrong. Now, Drouin was always a significant figure in Montreal Canadiens lore. And not even really for the best reasons. You see, he was initially a third overall pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2013. He's from Quebec, so of course he is a homegrown talent. And after he got sent over to Montreal in the Mikhail Sergachev trade in 2017, things kind of took a turn for the worst for Jonathan Drouin's career. You see, because he was taken third overall, he had a lot of hype behind his name, and rightfully so. He was a super amazing QMJHL forward who had produced such high offensive numbers alongside of the inevitable first overall pick in that year's draft, Nathan McKinnon of the Halifax Mooseheads. His stint with the Tampa Bay Lightning was also pretty promising, as in his last year with Tampa before getting traded over to Montreal, he posted up a career-high 53 points in 73 games played. 21 goals and 32 assists. Drouin got sent over to the Habs, and his first two seasons were actually pretty alright. He had 46 points in 2018 and 53 points in 2019, matching his career-high of points in a season, albeit in a few more games played. But after that, things started to turn a little bit sour. Because Jonathan Drouin, over the years, started to get hurt a lot. He started to miss time here and there. Sometimes he was missing time because he was injured. Other times he was missing time because he needed to take some time off and he had to step away. He spent some time in the NHL's player assistance program, and his time with the Habs was so displaced that when the Canadians went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2020-2021, he actually didn't participate in any of the games. He had 23 points in 44 games played that season in the regular season, but zero in the playoffs. Give it a few years, and Drouin would still be battling a few injuries. He had stopped scoring goals as well. His career high in goals was 21 with Tampa and 18 with Montreal, but in his last season with the Canadians, he had scored a whopping two goals in 58 games played, 29 total points as well. So when Jonathan Drouin, who at this point was a minus player, he was a minus every season he was with the Montreal Canadiens, actually. When this then 28-year-old forward hit the free agent market last summer, he ended up signing a one-year, $825,000 contract with the Colorado Avalanche. Now, at 29 years old, the 6 feet 203 pound left-handed winger has put himself on the map once more alongside of his former linemate Nathan McKinnon and... He has bested out his career highs in overall points. Drouin this season with the Colorado Avalanche has 56 points in 76 games played, 19 goals, 37 assists. He has already broken his career highs in assists in a season and points in a season. He's two away, though, from matching his 21 goals in 2016-17. But, when you're the top-line guy, you're playing with a player in Nathan McKinnon who can just manifest goals out of nothing, pretty much, you kind of don't need to get as many goals as you can. Besides, when everything's going well, you may even have some time with Miko Rantanen, who really knows. Right now, because he is out, Drouin is playing with McKinnon and Arturi Lekkonen, which is a great combo because there are two former Habs on that line. Nathan McKinnon, though, of course, was Jonathan Drouin's number one center with the Halifax Mooseheads, a duo that was so dominant in the QMJHL in McKinnon and Drouin's draft-eligible season in 2012-2013. Drouin actually outproduced McKinnon, but everybody who was watching the games, everybody who was recognizing just the talent on the ice could see that Drouin was the quote-unquote second-tier player compared to McKinnon. They were both really good. I mean, that's why Drouin went third overall, but McKinnon had top-line franchise-defining center written all over him, so that's kind of why he went first. But when you take a look at the dichotomy here between what Jonathan Drouin was for the Montreal Canadiens and what he is now for the Avs, Things have changed so much, and they could not be any better. During his stint to end off the Montreal Canadiens, sure, he had 29 points in 58 games played, 27 assists as well, 
But everybody was starting to realize, hey, Drouin had so many problems in Montreal with his health, with his mental, with the fans. Everybody was putting a ton of pressure on this guy because he was a former top pick who's from Quebec. That's the major formula that usually results in players playing for the Habs that get as much unwanted and unnecessary attention as they could get. Because once you're a French-Canadian young guy who is supposed to be some of the best hockey talent in your age group, by the time you hit the Montreal Canadiens, you're supposed to be living up to that title. But Drouin, unfortunately, was not able to do that. Heading over to Colorado, though, on what is essentially going to be, like, the best contract in the league right now. Like, if you wanted to talk about value, you want to talk about dollars and how much every point costs... Take a look at this from Cap Friendly. Aside from the players that are on their ELCs, like Wyatt Johnson, Seth Jarvis, and Lucas Raymond, Jonathan Drouin is the best player in the NHL when it comes to cost per point. Everybody else who is around his range, Byfield, Bedard, JJ Paterka, these guys are all in their entry-level contracts. Drouin signed a one-year $825,000 deal in free agency, as the biggest prove-it deal we could have seen out of anybody on the market last season. Drouin was coming off of a beefy contract. He was making $5.5 million a year with the Canadiens. You could say that was a bit of an overpayment for the service he provided, but the playmaking, offensively capable, and passing style of game that Drouin possessed just did not justify that $5.5 million AAV salary. So he gets sent over to Colorado, he starts playing here, and now we're talking about him in a way that we didn't really expect to be able to do so last year. Yesterday, Drouin had himself three assists on Nathan McKinnon goals, so that's where he's got that 56-point marker now. And when you talk about just how he's playing the game, he looks defensively minded, he's back-checking, he's winning a ton of face-offs, and he's making strong impacts everywhere on the ice, not just with how he's able to send the puck over to Nathan McKinnon to get those goals on the board and to get those assists going up. Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Drouin have been a pairing for the ages, and when it comes to Drouin and his impact, he is becoming a legit force for the Colorado Avalanche in a way that we did not know was possible a year ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best contracts in the NHL right now, and it's coming from a guy whom the Montreal Canadiens, you could say, gave up on, quote-unquote. I'm not going to use that phrasing because last year when the Canadiens decided to let Drouin go to free agency, it was kind of a mutual understanding between everybody involved, the team, the media, the fans, and the player, of course, that, hey, this guy kind of needed a change of scenery. Montreal just was not it, unfortunately. Everything that he wanted to accomplish with the Habs, he just could not do it, and... The Habs fan base was getting a little bit ticked off about that over the years. Towards the end, I'd say there was a little bit more pity because it was like, yeah, we know this guy can be good. It's just he doesn't excel in this Canadian system. He's not utilized to the best of his ability, and he's not really engaged either. Like, I'm not saying that it's the Canadians' fault. Oh, they don't have Nathan McKinnon to play him with and have him get all these assists and everything. But a good hockey team... And playing with somebody that you really, really like to play with, like what we're seeing in Colorado, that can bolster up an entire player's profile. Not just in terms of his assists and goals and everything, but everywhere else. His defensive reliability, his engagement in his own zone, his face-off potential winnings. All of these categories in Jonathan Drouin's game have excelled compared to last year. This is a completely different player from what we had seen suiting up for the Canadians over the past few seasons, and you could not be any happier if you're a Canadians fan to see this going down. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Jonathan Drouin has revived his career and he is proving Montreal wrong as a member of the Colorado Avalanche and as a part of that top line with Nathan McKinnon. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Duran, his time with the Habs, and his time with the Abs. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.